All right. Um, we, we're not starting officially yet, folks. I just wanted to welcome everyone. Feel free to say hi um, to each other. Uh, do you remember um, how Kumo Space works? Um, there is a sort of a spotlight, and if you're inside that spotlight, you can hear the other people in that spotlight. If you're not in it, if you want to go over and have a conversation with somebody, for example, and just that one person, you would move to a corner of the room, and uh, you can you can do that. And nobody else will hear you, um, unless we come over and s sit next to you. The um, worth knowing you can you can make the room bigger or smaller. You can zoom in and out using the plus and minus key on your keyboard or on the top right there. There's a there are symbols for it. And there's also a map. Um, if you if you click on the map, you can see the entire room, and you might want that might be helpful to orient at some point. I think that's probably all you need to know. Um, Where did they find the map? Oh, there's a. It's over on the far right. You can also click uh, M. It, the, the map will come up. Um, there's a symbol for it on there. Are, there's a plus sign, a minus sign. I don't know what that other sign is for. And a keyboard. No, sorry. All right. So, and then there are instructions around the room. Um, we're going to more or less stay together, but we don't have to. Um, we, If we want to kind of say, I'd like to spend more time working on this or something, we can do that at some point. Um, you also don't have to stay muted. Um, I, I encourage you to be unmuted um, in this space. It works out just fine. Um, we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is ask you to, um, there's a number one right above Maritza um, to the left. Um, it says, uh, one thing you did that makes you feel in the last week or so, um, that makes you feel good about yourself as a teacher, student, and I threw parent in there too, just for the fun of it. Um, so one thing you did over the past week that makes you feel good about yourself as a teacher or a, a, a student or a parent. Um, and then we're going to, so we're going to ask everybody to talk, get involved here. Um, I guess we should start, right? Let's Nikki, start. Or, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. enough. Uh, hopefully more people will join us, but just. Um... Yeah. Okay. Um, and do introduce yourself a, a bit like where are you working um, this semester kind of thing would be useful to know. Um, when you finish that story, and I'm almost done with my explanation here. When you finish that story, we're going to ask you to uh, associate your experience and this takes a little thinking, we'll give you a minute, with one of the 16 habits of mind that are over there on the right side. Again, you might use the um, minus key to make it a little smaller so you can see where that is. But over toward the right, there is a chart that has 16 habits of mind. We worked with those this summer. Um, so you might or might not be familiar with them. So I just thought that, you know, you could... You want to say, okay, yeah, I did, I did such and such, and that shows um, that I'm um, beginning to think more flexibly in my life, something like that. But so pick a habit of mind to associate your experience with. I hope I didn't make that task too hard. <laughs> did, did I? Or is it okay? Okay. So you're you're saying one thing you did that makes you feel good about yourself, and then you're so to just and as as you introduce yourself. And then you're associating that with one of the habits of mind. And if you can't think of one, we'll help you. How about that? Who would like to go first? Me. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> cool. And you have your, you have, oh, you you turned it on. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So my name is Oscar Castilla. I am a research assistant for LUSTEM. I also work for the Office of Clinical Practice and Partnerships. Um, at the moment, I am working at Amalgamated Nursery School, and one thing that just really made me super happy to be a student was that I passed my third master's course. So I guess the first thing that came to mind was persisting, because 
we are going to continue with this master's and we are going to get all A's. That is my goal. Wow. <laughs> Beaut beautifully concise and connected. Thank you. Why don't you pick the next person to go? Uh, no pressure. No. Let's go with Laura. <laughs> go for it, Laura. Hi everyone, as you know, my name is Laura and um, one thing um, that I did that makes me feel good about is like this whole new experience in the classroom. Um, it's me, I had the opportunity to do my second time at lesson and we were, we were talking about coordination and um, my host teacher gave me the opportunity to transform the different area. And I'm working with with a group of students, and we're trying to create a den for a box. And one of the kids was so excited that today we was in the botanical garden, and he was trying to collect things like pine corn. Uh, and he was like, "Here, it's for it's for we can finish our day. It's for finish our day." He was so excited, and I think that's remind me open to continue learning because um having that opportunity made me think that, like how the students learn how can i keep learning from them like that little that activity maybe it's a small or maybe a person was like what they are doing but for then he was so excited and it means it means too much to him that that's, That's wonderful. I, I also thought um, resp responding with wonderment and awe is, is part of what was happening there as well. But yeah. We're up. You're not, you're not wrong. I, I just, it's just, we're both right, right? Yeah, but yeah, but I think that's interesting. So Laura, can you pick the next person to go? Yes, I'm going to pick uh, Nikki. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, the thing that was really um, different for me this week is that I had an opportunity to meet in person um, um, with um, folks from Lehman and from other and from Turo and from Brooklyn and people from the U.S. Prep Collaboration, and um, we really brainstormed where we wanted to go um, with clinical. Experience. Experiences based on loot STEM and or leveraging loot STEM so that all students have quality experience um, at the level that our loot STEM residents have. Um, I think that what this encouraged me to do is to think and communicate with clarity and precision as we try to create action plans. Okay, next, I'm going to pick on Marina. Hi, um, I'm Marina, and I'm a third grade teacher at the Canico Hills uh, School. And one thing that makes me feel really good is that um, this year, this uh, week, I actually had a student teacher from a local college join my class, um, and she'll be with me for a few months and um, it was really exciting to get to know her and hear what's really important to her, um, her goals for herself and what she wants to try out um, during the time that she's with me. And um, we had a lot of moments that she would say something and I would say, that reminds me of this. And then she would say something else. Hi there. Hi, Amy. Good. Um, we're introducing ourselves and telling telling each other one thing we did that makes us feel good about ourselves um, as a teacher or a student. Um, and we're on the gray rug right above youth voices. Do you remember how to move around here with the... Okay. So come on up and join us. <laughs> you okay? I should have waited to ask. Is that... Are you ready to join us? Are you okay? Me, yeah, wait. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to move. Okay. So you use the um, the arrow keys to move around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here. Um, 
My name is Leslie Lehman, and I'm the Director of Clinical Practice and Partnerships at Lehman College. So I place all the student teachers and work with all the student teachers and interns. And um, so this week, I added a new section to our orientation, which I actually love. I love doing our orientations. They are exhausting but I run them twice uh, a, a each, each semester to a day. And um, I really try to create an incredibly strong foundation for the students to prepare for going out into their schools. And this year I added on a new section where I gave the students three websites for them to research about their schools before the first day. So one was the school's own website, the other was the, the DOE's website, and the other was inside school's website. And I learned from a principal who used a phrase called, don't jump the ladder, meaning don't jump to conclusions with information that you are first gathering. And I was able to sort of use that framework to ask students, hey, research everything there is about your school, but research the data. Some of it may reflect really great things, and some of it may reflect some things that raise some questions for you, but don't jump the ladder. Don't jump to conclusions. Start with the facts, gather information, um, and so I felt proud about that new information and I got a lot of response back from the students and their exit tickets that the day was uh, incredibly helpful. So I'm looking and I'm saying, thinking and communicating with clarity and precision, I sort of live in that circle, in that space for people who know me. And I also would say I, I pull in a little bit of creating, imagining and innovating because uh, what I've created for students, imagine 55 to 100 students having access to this information to different schools. So I've created with our IT office an entirely new location for students to um, uh, collect and collect information about their schools. Anyway, thank and you, I'm happy you. to be here and I'm happy to invite all of you if you want to join us for a seven o'clock event following this one <laughs> so, but it's a long evening but anyway thank you nikki for having me great and um i'll call on maritza cool. Cool. hi everyone i am currently um working in at samara i'm a lutstem resident there and something I would like to share is like today, we, my case in the overlap a little with Laura because we do work with the same um, classroom, pre K. But um, one thing I would like to share is like today was my last day following pre K one. So we have two classes, pre K one and pre K two, because we start in full time next week. So I was assigned to pre-K-2, which means I would no longer be working with pre-K-1, which makes me a little sad. But I had the opportunity to go with them today to the botanical gardens and make this like the best experience for them. And um, connecting whatever we saw out there with what we have been doing in the classroom, which we've been doing hibernation. So my lesson plan revolved around um, creating homes for animals that hibernate. So um, while we were there, um, we were exploring to see if we see any um, uh, anything related or associated to hibernation or any animals that they see out there. But um, yes, I'm just a little sad because I won't be working with them, like I mentioned. And um, I was just glad to be able to be there and um, be part of this group. And I guess mine would fall within thinking flexibly. Nice. Good job. Not too sure. Makes sense to us, to me. Yeah. And uh, do you want to, there are three of us haven't gone yet. Do you want to choose? I'll pick one, Amy. Okay. 
Amy, we're looking for one thing you did very recently that makes you feel good about yourself as a teacher or a learner or a parent, if you'd like. Um, good, after, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is well. Uh, one thing that uh, recently happened actually just happened this week. So uh, not long ago, there were a lot of cases, even I uh, was COVID, even I, even the students that we were working with, a lot of them were also out for a long time. So they really caught, they were really behind a lot of work. And um, and even us, we were very having a hard time even having them keep up to do stuff online. So when we finally were able to go back uh, in person, even this week, a lot of students really showed that they were willing to, um, to, be able to make up or to be able to catch up to what they were missing. So we were had we were having during lunchtime students come up in the classroom and try to do the assignment, trying to do what they're missing, and just the fact to be able to help them to be able to to be able to catch up. That was really something that I really felt proud of. We really felt I really felt proud of because a lot of students were were really failing because especially this was a, a time where. Uh, we had to give a lot of grades in. We had to turn a lot of grades. So having the opportunity to have the students be able to catch up, to be able to be on speed, that's really one thing I really felt proud of, be able to help them in any way uh, possible and for them to even excel beyond what's going on with COVID and everything else. So that's one thing I would say. Yeah. And we're, which habit of mind do you think that fits best with? That helping them catch up? Others can help her too. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Sorry, uh, we're the, over on the right side. There, there's the, the habits of mind are there again. Mm -hmm. um, your experience with helping those uh, students catch up with their work. What, which habit of mind do you think that is? I would probably say taking responsibility to risk. So we took a risk to, instead of just moving forward, to really stay there before making sure the students understood because we didn't know what was going to be the outcome, whether the students were going to be able to excel or not. But we took that risk, the responsibility for them to be able to do. And the student even on their side, they also took the responsibility to make sure that they were able to complete what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Nice. Cool. So either... Gayen or myself? Who... Yeah, probably me first. Okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Gao Yun Chen. I'm the uh, research coordinator on the team. And uh, I myself, as a faculty in the School of Ed, I'm in the Literacy Studies program. And one of the things I think uh, I feel good about is that as I was going, one of the assessments we using to evaluate the residents is the cooperating teachers feedback form. And uh, as I was going to example of cooperating or mentor teachers feedback form, and the, some of the mentors really gave very specific comments to our residents and i was kind of connect to one of the assignments made given to me by nikki is to think about how to prepare cooperating teachers or mentors i think we probably could identify uh, some of the veteran teachers who are good at provide feedback to their uh, residents or student teachers and have them to share their thoughts with us. I think that's something, one of the things I would, I would think about. I think that's a good way to prepare our cooperating teachers as well as college supervisors and how to provide uh, constructive and the feedback to our teacher candidates. And uh, one of the things I can relate to probably, I don't know, probably is becoming or striving for more accuracy, but I don't like the word accuracy, probably striving for effectiveness or impact on our candidates, as well as uh, the school students. If they do a good job, better job, and then the students will be 
Good. That's what I can hear. Yeah, I bet, that, I bet that accuracy stuff works best in math class, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. So I, I think I haven't gone yet. And what I will mention is that um, I'm working with a group of researchers who are doing research on habits of mind. Um, and I this week I put up three dissertations that were recently written about the habits of mind, um, looking in very different places. One is a math class for third graders um, and how she uses habits of mind and so forth. But um, I helped those three young teachers who are working on their dissertations um, get get their work up and then they're going to gather together um, all these researchers really from all over the world to to talk about their dissertations in a Kumo space by the way um, on Monday so um, the that made me feel good about myself to help those teachers do that and um, the connection I'll make there is uh, thinking inter interdependently um so that's uh that's what i'll mention um we want to move to um take a breath here a second um we're going to come back to this space and just to the right you'll see on the white table don't go there now um there is a an exit ticket i just want you to know that that's there at the end the rest of what we're going to do this evening is um on two tables above you um, there is a table, and we'll go first to look at Laura's um, um, scratch project that she did, and then we'll look at Maritza's um, story, web story that she made. Um, both of these things are things that we did in the summertime, and we were just fascinated that you were picking them up and working on them now. Marina, do you want to say a word about that? <laughs> Does that make sense? Marina? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, sorry. Okay. I was... <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's really exciting to come together and and have Laura and Marita tell these stories about how the summer um, work impacted um, their experiences in the classroom. So I'm really happy that um, we're doing this all together. Cool. Um, there are also, there are also multimodal um examples um which are you know i think are exciting to have um they're both on a a post on youth voices um when you click on the table when you go to it you'll go to the post itself you can listen to it watch it um, it'll come up on a different tab on your browser um and then and then what we'd like you to do is write a response to to laura just uh, um, there is in the middle, there is a guide for how to write a response. Um, you can use it or not use it. It's up, sort of up to you. Um, so let's spend, I'm looking at the clock, let's spend 10 minutes doing that on Laura's. And then we'll spend 10 minutes doing that on Maritza's. And then we'll come back together and talk. Does that sound okay? Any questions? So you want to use your cursor, go up to the table to the left. The The sign is, you can just follow my voice here. Yeah, here we go. You want to find find a green chair, just so you're not sitting on top of things. And then if you click anywhere on that table, um, which is an image from her scratch project, you'll open up a new tab and you'll go to Youth Voices. If you're a member of Youth Voices, you can log in and and uh, write a response below. If you're not a member, you can still write a re write a comment, and um, you just have to put your name and email address in, and it, it, you'll be able to write your comment. So we do want to just give ten minutes here of just kind of quiet work, unless you have a question or a thought or an issue, um, let us know. Okay, so. There is sound on that scratch project, so if you're not hearing sound, let us know. <laughs> okay. So we're not showing it to you. We're letting you go off and do it yourself. Okay. And we'll call you back in nine minutes now. Sorry to interrupt one last time, I hope. 
Um, the the guide is over there on the on the table um, toward the right, but you don't have to use it. Just any kind of positive, encouraging, um, specific feedback is what we're looking for. Hello everyone, my Hello. name is Lara Duran. I would Sorry. like to share with you my show way story. Let's go, come with me. I was born yeah. and raised in Dominican Republic. Coming to the United States, it was a huge transition for me. Everything was new and confusing for what I was used to see. I had to adapt to a new culture and learn a new language. During this new stage of my life, I faced many challenges. For example, learning English was one of the biggest challenges that I faced. During this time of my life, I was frustrated because I couldn't understand what some people were talking or asking me. For the first time, I found myself in a school without any knowledge of the English language. Not being able to speak, read, write or understand English was affecting my educational performance. Even though I was receiving ESL instruction, it was still difficult. As a part of the education system, I was required to pass what we call the Regents exam. I was exhausted and almost giving up on school because I was passing my class. However, I was not able to pass my Regents exam. I failed this exam many times, but I forgot how many times I took it before, especially the English region. This exam became my nightmare. It felt almost impossible to pass them. Mm -hmm. I did not have a good academic writing skill to compose my essays in English. I feel frustrated because I had completed my classes credit but I was still in failing the English test. In addition to all that, I had reached the legal aid, which considered me as a candidate to be transferred to nine classes. I went to go back to my country, where I could finish my education with any challenge and graduate with my old friends. However, that didn't happen. I was transferred and I was required to take night classes. For my luck, that's the best thing could happen to me. Because even though I faced all that circumstances, I finally had the opportunity to meet incredible teachers who support me and promote me during this new path of my life. Teacher who cares about their student learning, well-being, and success. I learned a lot of things from them. They taught me to see the hard situation of life with a positive attitude, and this had a great impact on my life. This teacher made me feel valued and respect. I could identify myself with them. Having these teachers in my life and the impact they made on me pushed me and inspired me to become an educator. These experiences made me realize that if this teacher helped me, I could help other children who could come from the same hard situation. Therefore, I would like to be one of the teachers in this education system because children need teachers who care about their education in academic itself. Becoming a teacher is one of my priority goals in life. Based on my life experience, I know I could support and help children in many ways. I also want to have a positive impact on their life as some of my teachers did on me. I know it's not an easy task. But being able to become a part of the teaching career is a reward experience because children are the future of our society.
in our world. I want to be a teacher who makes a difference on the student and help them shine with their own light. Okay, I just want to check in. We're about halfway done. So if you haven't started writing back to Laura yet, uh, please do that. If there's a question about how to do that, let me know. Um, it's The form to write back to her is right down toward the bottom. You can also find it just by clicking on this that green comment button. Paul, so I, I've sort of lost you. Where are we? Okay. Planning? So, um, did you did you watch the scratch presentation? Loved it. Okay. Bravo, Laura. Okay. So that's what you're going to write, <laughs> and then you're going to say why, and maybe pick out two places that sure. stood out to you. Um, on right underneath the presentation, there is a, a form to where that you can do the writing that. on that page. Yep. And you can find the form also by clicking a green comment bubble. You'll find it that follows you. Again, if you're if you're a member already of Youth Voices, you can log in and do it. If you're not, you can just put in a um, an email address and your name, and, and you can leave a leave a po the comment that way. You won't see other people's comments until you refresh the screen, but okay. Probably want to quiet so people can work. Do spend some time writing right now. has been a big factor in the way they learn and stuff because they don't know how to interact with each other. And that's why I think the physical movement would be best because Hi there. you give them breaks to socialize. They don't know how to. But they're just going to sit there and what, least the physical... Hi there. If you want to follow me, we're we're up at a table in the top left. Come on up.
Okay, just to say, um, looking at the clock and wondering and hoping that you're almost done, um, after you post your comment, you might want to refresh that page and you'll be able to see other people's comments there as well. You could go back and reply to each of them, Laura, if you want to. <laughs> um, or you, or we could reply to each other's as well, just to say. Um, those are starting to add up there. Um, if you've done, let's let's give it. Let how about if we give it two minutes to just give verbal feedback to Laura? She's here. <laughs> Who wants to say something, Laura, to Laura about her her work here? Or you've written it all? <laughs> Go for it. My comments are posting. Okay. Um, did you hit post? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll look into that. Okay. But then I will. Uh, where is Laura? Yeah, I think There's I have Laura to approve them, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll just, Laura, just bravo on your scratch and presentation i really thought uh telling your personal story and the images that you either drew yourself or selected were really well done and really uh enhanced the story that you told and uh i also thought it was really interesting that the face on your character which was you did not actually change through any of the slides. And yet I saw you as either sad or happy based on the surroundings. And um, so I was personally saddened to see that um, you might have expressed that people didn't think that you were smart, which to me is more a reflection of the people around you who didn't see your light and your brilliance. So I'm, I'm glad you found your community of students educators and um i thought that was really well done and i see your post you was able to post it. it's in there yep yeah oh, okay good <laughs> so laura um first of all you showed me what scratch could do because i had a really limited sense of what scratch could do so thank you for that um i'm going to call out amy grace and um because I, I'm beginning to see a theme across a lot of our residents and their experience coming to this country and feeling um, that the language barriers were really um, huge. And uh, Amy did a presentation last year for a class that she did, where she did a PowerPoint presentation about her experience coming to this country. and. Um, I, I'm thinking that all these various ways we communicate um, our personal stories really help us become sensitive and responsive teachers to kids who can connect to our, you know, can, can connect to you in ways that they might not be able to connect to teachers who haven't been there, done that. I just want to, as we move to Maritza's, and I, we could take longer to talk here, um, just want to um, highlight the fact that commenting on youth voices is also something we're reminding you about. And, and that way of communicating and connecting um, is available to, every, to you to use. And it's also something we worked on in the summer. There, so social media and and finding ways to use that in your classroom is is an important thing we're demonstrating here too as well as scratch as well as all the other things we're doing here too but so just want to, so we're going to do that one more time if you'll move over to the other side of the room here to the right side you great you will find an image also with chairs around it sort of Imagine that as a table. Um, click anywhere in that image and you'll open another new tab. And this time there is no sound with this one, so you have to read the words yourself. <laughs> um, but Maritza um, created this web story 
um, and why don't you read it and write a response, okay? And we'll, I think you'll be okay to do that. We'll try to give 10 minutes for this too as well. Is it working? Is it opening? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. You'll notice that if you tap on the left side of the of the um, slideshow, you can go back. If you tap on the right side, you'll go forward. Sorry, what are we doing now? That's cool. Um, we're, you want to. Nikki's right on top of the table, which is fine. Amy is too. To, it's okay. You might move out to the red chairs just so All people right, can let see. Let me get out of the way. That's <laughs> okay. So there's a there's an image there. There are red chairs. There's an image in the center there. If you click on that image, another Youth Voices post will come up, and we're asking you to read the web story that um, that Maritza created, called Maritza's Showway. Right. And then write a res and write a response to her. And just to say again, if you tap on the left side of those, that slideshow, you go back. If you tap on the right side, you go forward. Sorry, I, I'm reading the same story. Is it the same? No, you want to read "Who Inspired Me to Be a Teacher" by Maritza. Yeah. That's what I read before. Am I back to the other table then and look at the scratch project? You did them backwards. I see. Which you can do. You can here I'll come with me. Come over here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it doesn't matter what order you're doing it. Click on that table now, and you'll go to a Scratch presentation, and you can write a response to that. Did that bring up something different for you? Scratch. I just click on the on these items. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then a a post that says Inspire comes up. And if you scroll down, you click on the red, or sorry, the green flag, oh, it'll, okay. it'll start it, okay? Yeah. And then you'll yeah. leave you leave a comment there. Okay. Cool. Yes.
Okay, I think you want to. Whoop! Let me go back over here. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna finish up here. Just to say, I'm gonna go back over to the other table and say that. One second. All right. So we want to kind of finish. You want to finish your comment. Make sure it gets posted, and then refresh and read what other people are writing for a minute. And then let's do some talking. <laughs> we'll talk here at the table to Maritza about her work, and then we'll go down to the round rug again to kind of finish up. Let me get. Do you want to come over with the group when you're ready? And then, okay. All right. Um, who would like to unmute and talk to Maritza herself <laughs> about her, what she just created here? Hello, hello. Anybody there? <laughs> Amy Grace, I was fascinated by your comment um, hmm. about Maritza's work. I'm wondering if, in her case, in Maritza's case, her parents were were really the champions, or whether the teachers were really the champions. Hmm. Um, I think that they both played a big part into uh, her becoming who she is because teachers can only do so much. If at home you do not have the support that you uh, that 
you need, you can go home and not really excel. But in this case, we see that her parents telling her that she can be, she can be one of the great people in the Spanish community. That kind of also could push her into doing her assignments at home, to push her to studying when she's at home. So only not only was she pushing forward at school, but when she was coming home, she also had the support to keep on going that procedure. So uh, her efforts or the help that she needed, she was not only getting from school, but also from home. So I think okay. both were champions in her cases, in her case. Marissa, yeah. your comment. So we're talking to Maritza about her work. If you want to come join us about that. Are, are you working still? Okay. Yeah. When Amy Grace saw your, your, saw your family as champions, was your mom a champion? Your dad sure wasn't. You're talking to me, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yes, it was more uh, my mom who kind of pushed me to finish school, but in in a in a way that it, it was a little bit like behind my dad's back. I could say like she was a little bit afraid, like she wants me to finish school, but then she was also afraid of what my dad would say, what my father would say during that time. So it was more like, you know, uh, I I found a lot of support through through my teachers mainly. Right. Yes, like especially during my high school years. So, um, that, you know, it's like I'm totally fascinated. Sorry, I, I'm totally fascinated by the the two the two married teachers in that slide. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to know the story behind that slide. On on the I said this in my comment, but I'll say it now too. I okay. there, there's so much there that I want to know more. On right. the other hand, I like that it's that you tell the story visually, right? It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yes, I actually did this as a project for um uh for Kim Kimberly Vanderbilt's class, mm -hmm. uh, EC seven fifty six. Mm -hmm. So it was more that I did like more talking during that time when I presented, and it was just like little notes I took that I that I put in there so I could remember what to say. But um, uh, Mr. Sajima and Mr. Jima, they actually brothers and sisters. Oh, they weren't they're not a married couple. Oh, no, <laughs> but they but they taught in the same school. Yes. How yes. interesting. That's even uh -huh. more interesting. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So, um, we want to respect your time, and we want you to do the um, debrief at the end. Um, let's uh, before we go down there, though. Um, any general comments about? using multimedia storytelling in your classroom and how the summer impacts your work now and be bold here speak up <laughs> well i haven't really had the opportunity to use these platforms in um in my classroom mm -hmm. because it's pre-k students but um I, I would say like these platforms are great when you take to happen through stories, through their images, or even through um, audios, you know, especially for those kids that have, uh, who are very shy and speaking like I am. So I feel like these platforms give the opportunity to, you know, tell us a story using um, different kinds of sources, you know, uh, like I just said, like uh, recording yourself or using um, images. Um, than enough, I think, to know a little bit more about them. And I just feel like it's just a, a great resource to have. Cool. All right. Um, I, I hate to cut this off, but I think we should. Um, if you go back down and then over to the middle to the round gray rug with the brown chairs, just to the right of that, there's a debrief, um, a, an exit ticket. If you'll click on that and do that exit ticket for us, we'd really appreciate it. Any other announcements or anything that you want to make, Nikki? Or... I'll probably send everybody that link um, to, the, to the exit ticket. Story, just... Laura and Marissa.
so that um, we, we get your feedback on that. Really get to know each other. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, this room stays here, by the way. If you want to bring somebody back and say, hey, look what, look what we did, you can just use this, just use kumospace.com slash loop dash dash them, and uh, it'll be here. And Laura and Ritza, feel free to comment back to people um, on Youth Voices and keep going. Thank you all. Okay, if you decide you want to fill out the exit ticket now, um, it's sitting on the table to your right. Um, but don't worry, I'll send the link to you in an email just to follow up as well. I want to thank all of you. I, I, I It's just generated a lot of really interesting uh, ideas in my head about how we really need to make sure that we um, create an inviting and inclusive environment for individuals who are as talented as you are um, to become teachers for kids um, who, um, who, who can see themselves reflected in your journey, your challenges, and your experiences. All right. Find your shovels. It's going to snow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk to you all soon. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks for organizing this. It's it's so, masterful. Thank you. Thanks. And I do have a recording, Oscar. So you have one. I have one. We can compare them at some point. <laughs> okay. For everyone who's new Perfect. to this space, I generally go back to the lobby and then log out. I'm sure there are that's other right. ways to do it, but I think that's yeah, that's the best way.